Boy Meets World was a very, very large part of my life and still is to this day. It definitely shaped who I was. We had scenes together every day for seven years. I don't think I'll ever have that kind of connection. Why don't you just marry Sean? We did not have anybody that didn't get along. It was always very harmonious. We've all remained friends. Here's what a sincere smile looks like. I don't think it's as much a cliche to say we were like a family. Our show was very relatable. People just really saw themselves, and it made it easier to love it. TV's not funny. Corey's life is funny. <laughs> very rarely, as an actor, do you get to be a part of something like that. We were really lucky to work on such a good, decent show. Such a cool, tight-knit cast. The kids were terrific, all of them. Mr. Feeney, may I sit down? I'd rather you didn't. Hates me. I met with Michael Jacobs, and we kind of just started talking about doing a TV show, and they wanted to do a show about kids, and they wanted to show what the world was like from the eyes of a young, rambunctious 13-year-old. Ben came into my office, and he said, here's the way I would do it. This is what I'd like to see happen. And he was about two and a half years old. And I said, well, we're going to do it exactly your way. And Ben and I have been great friends ever since, and certainly he was perfect for Corey. The door is open. At the time, it was the Untitled Ben Savage Project. Yeah. And I auditioned. I have the most boring you story in the world. <laughs> Well, you're, you're the only one that actually has a story. My, I just I auditioned. Do. Keep bragging on him. He's going to make your whole sixth grade year miserable. My part had like two lines in the pilot, so I thought it was just kind of a small thing. And there's the bell. Four hours till lunch. I got involved in a strange way where I got sick for the audition, and they went and they cast a different older brother. I'd kill you, but I can't move. I heard later he and Ben were pretty much the same height when they wanted the older brother to, to be, you know, a, a bigger guy. So they recast, and I went in and reshot the pilot. Yes! Yes! First season, we were all just finding our way. And I think the writers were finding their way with us, what would work and what wouldn't. They wanted Ben to have two best friends. If you watch the first few episodes, there's always another kid. But then the next week, it's always a different kid. What am I going to do about my hair? The episode where Ben straightens his hair, they fired this kid halfway through, and they gave my character all of his lines. So that's why Sean has a sister named Stacy in that episode that never reappears. Hey, Stacy, it's me. Listen, Corey wants to know if that stuff you sent over should be burned. But then there was also the episode where they found Danielle and introduced the Topanga character, which obviously became, like, the cornerstone of the whole show. Give me your hand. <laughs> Why? I want to see if our energies converge. I originally auditioned, and I didn't get it. And they had hired another girl to play Topanga. And, uh, unfortunately, she just wasn't really working out. And they asked me to come in and audition again. And I did, and I got the job. The first time, you know, Corey and Topanga flirted in, uh, in season one when they were playing basketball with a pair of socks. You know, you saw where this relationship was going. Way to go, Topanga! <laughs> <laughs> By the time they introduced their love story, it was like, okay, this is what the show's gonna be about. The kids were really smart kids, you know. They were well-rounded, and once we got to know each other, then we really understood each other's rhythms, so that made a difference. I think, in terms of how we bonded. No, don't hug me! Rusty was great. We used to go to Clippers games all the time after work. I mean, he really, he did a nice job of kind of being my TV father. Am I still grounded? We'll talk about it. Hey, talk? I can get anywhere. <laughs> I'm so lucky to get to work with Rusty. I think that we brought out good things for each other. Both of us did. Uh... Betsy is very nurturing very, very motherly. How can I get my wonderful boys for dinner tomorrow night? Betsy was wonderful. I mean, she was a loving mother on set, off set, in the show, off the show. I love Betsy and Rusty. They were fantastic. And I also think that they are two of the greatest 90s, especially parents on a sitcom. They were almost peers. I was older than they. But uh, I got along very well with them. And, and they were always very prepared. What the hell are we looking at? <laughs> I always loved the scenes where it was Corey and Mr. Feeney, and there was a lot of them. It's hard to picture you as a boy. <laughs> Did your parents call you Mr. Feeney? When I was in a scene with Bill, I always felt that whatever he was saying to Corey, he was also saying to Ben. They always were instructive and meaningful. Whenever you've been faced with adversity, you have always risen to the occasion. Now, I have no reason to believe that you won't again. 
I don't think there's anybody in the world that could have done more or done better with that character. I have a great respect for teachers, and I didn't want to play a foolish teacher and get laughs because he's an idiot or something like that. So it worked out fine. I never felt like I was making fun of the profession. Uh, I hear it all the time. Mr. Feeney is the reason I'm a teacher now. So he had a huge impact on our world. Oh, yeah. <laughs> In the first season, I said, I'd like to work with Bill Daniels. For me, when your character really clicked, was the scene with you and Feeney. How you doing, Mr. Feeney? And how can I help you in the garden today? <laughs> it's the scene where I have to throw a big bag of fertilizer or something like that. And Michael just kept saying, it's not funny. And I said, I'm throwing the bag of fertilizer. It's not supposed, I'm just throwing it. Well, let me just effortlessly toss it over here then. And finally, I threw it. It's the one they use where I make this sound. I go like, Hoo -duh! Hoo -duh! <laughs> And they all started laughing, and that was the moment I went like, oh, I can kind of, you know, make weird noises and go, to get, would go where they're not expecting. And it did kind of take me in a much yeah. different kind of place. Unfortunately, that, that just meant that they would keep writing crazier and crazier stuff for yeah. real. For the first four, if not five years, I was the only girl on set. So it was, you know, Ben, Ryder, and Will, and then me. I loved the boys club. What's the matter? No funny remarks? She was a part of us, of us from the beginning, and nobody said boo, again, no one thought twice very about smart, it. Very smart, very quick. Like, yeah. It was so much fun yeah. to work with her. You were the one who made him throw dirt at me? <laughs> you were a girl, Noogie Head. There weren't too many times I felt really excluded, and I actually just really loved growing up with them. From the moment I've known Danielle till just was talking to her this morning, it's always been a sweet, positive, kind, thoughtful, terrific person. And that has not changed ever. <laughs> Our first kiss happened in front of a live studio audience. Ben was more nervous than I was. Don't let him tell you that he, he wasn't. I was a little nervous because it was on camera. There was an audience and a sound stage full of hundreds of people. But I think it actually translated well, so it was funny. It was my first one, too. <laughs> ben is just one of the funniest people I've ever been around. And still to this day, I don't know if anybody makes me laugh harder for longer. I think for a long time you felt the pressure to be sort of neutral or the anything. Anchor, too just, yeah, you had yeah. to be the anchor. And I think Ben decided to make boring interesting, which was <laughs> really did, brilliant, he right? Did. He started kind of doing this like, yeah, and it was like he became underpants, 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 underpants. underpants. Oh. Here we go. And he started doing all these weird voices. <laughs> the ice capades. Don't ever take me there. It took Corey a few years in order to become, you know, the neurotic, crazy, quirky, strange nut job that he turned out to be, but he was funny. So, when we're upstairs, is you got a date. Morgan, long time no see. I was the youngest person just on set. Um, so for me, I did feel like the little sister, literally, because I came in, I'm like, oh, well, I'm 10, so, you know. Is she the she, first Morgan she or the second? She was the first second? Morgan, the second Morgan. We're totally kidding. I'm joking. We love Lindsay. <laughs> she was with us for a long time. What I liked about Morgan was her attitude. I wouldn't use this dress to wipe my <laughs> We had some great other guest guys. I mean, you got Blake. Blake Soper. Blake and Soper and uh, Ethan Supley. Yep. I like making people happy. <laughs> Frankie Stacchino, man, he was a great character. Outstanding, Stacchino, outstanding. Anything else? Yes, thank you. <laughs> the arc for Jonathan Turner was a magnificent arc because he became a parent for Sean. You keep heading down this life track you're on, then the places you're going aren't any places you're going to want to be, man. Ultimately, that didn't work. You know, it's like, why are there people in their 20s on a kid's show? I've talked to Tony about this as well, and he knew. I mean, it was one of those things where he understood where it just didn't seem to be working anymore or fitting anymore. Once you have a motorcycle accident and you're in a coma... I wish we had explained that. I, I do feel like there was, you know... A unfinished business unfinished when business it came to Tony, yeah. With Mr. Turner. I'll, uh, talk to Chubby C for Lord Ralph for us. <laughs> in the later seasons of the show, we brought in Maitland and Matt and Trina. You know, it probably wasn't easy for them joining the cast, you know, especially a cast that had been so built up and so close. But there was no egos and, you know, it was just kind of welcome aboard and let's go. Trina was the first in that list. They did tell me before the season started, they said, we're going to give you a girlfriend that's going to last for a while. I thought I was just coming on for a guest spot, OK? And then I got called back for two more episodes. So something was kind of a planning that I didn't know about. And she was great. And I was like, this is awesome. And this is going to be a new cornerstone of the show. Yep. And I think we had a little crushy crush on each other. But you know, 
He's a little hotty. Drop the towel. <laughs> Ryder's big thing was he didn't like his hair falling in his eyes. So, you know, I mean, you see it all the time. He's like running his fingers through his hair. And I don't think he knew he was driving every girl in America wild. It became part of your character. I with know, the, the constant hair flipping yeah, back was I like know. a thing. I still, to this day, if I catch myself doing this, <laughs> I stop. I'm like, stop. Ryder. Is that you, Sean? Get out. <laughs> you had that kind of following. And, and well, Matt, Lawrence Matt Lawrence hadn't Lawrence, been on the yeah, show. Once Lawrence got Once Lawrence got on the show. Got on there, <laughs> the rest of us were good. I'll, uh, I'll take it from here, buddy. See you later, buddy. <laughs> and I got on set and I realized they're all crazy, just lunatics, and, um, you know. I uh, really love Boy Meets yeah, World. Yeah, Boy Meets World. Good time, good time. I had a really hard time, you know, meshing as a cast. I was a straight man, you know, but I was, uh... <laughs> No, it wasn't like that at all. They were amazing. Everybody was incredible. I just love Maddie. That's how you <laughs> Yeah, nice to meet you. All right. <laughs> I don't like him. Michael has an obsession with love triangles, too, I think. So he brought Maitland in and created the love triangle. She pretty. That a lot of women. <laughs> I auditioned for another show, and Michael Jacobs was like, well, you know what? We want to bring you on to Boy Meets World and create a character for you. We've been thinking about having a roommate for Will and Matt's characters. We're gonna be just like girlfriends. <laughs> we had Matthew and Will, who is so brilliantly funny at everything he does, <laughs> that he would never end up with Maitland, simply because it was far funnier if he didn't. Who's Rachel? She's my beautiful new roommate, Angel. <laughs> She's back at the apartment right now with Jack. Oh, no. <laughs> we sort of had, like, this B storyline in the apartment, and that just kept getting more and more out of control and more and more fun. One of my first experiences was the food fight, so we just got to throw food at each other, and that's like a dream come true. Gosh, I don't even think that made it into the final episode with how big we actually went. The audience just went wild for it because it was a gender equality food fight. I'm not your mother! And that was probably the most fun food fight. No! Where did the Feeney call come from? Oh, the Feeney call. Mr. Feeney! <laughs> it wasn't written as the Feeney call. It really just started with just Mr. Feeney. Mr. Feeney. And then by, you know, by the end, then it's just, oh, Feeney! Feeney! You know, you're just going nuts with it. It was just, you know, however you kind of wanted to say it. Feeney! <laughs> Will was the improv king. I mean, they would basically just give him a prop and a shtick or a bit of that week and just go. <laughs> <laughs> the lollipop was all me. <laughs> During the run through, I said, can you just get me a lollipop on a rope? So that's what I did. I just pulled out and pulled out the thing. And that was, that was my nod to Dan Aykroyd in Trading Places. That's great. But I didn't know that. Yeah. About season four or five, we were just like, we gotta just start doing our own thing. And I think Michael really went for it. You know, yeah. we got we got more meta. We started having, you know, a kid gets acquainted with the universe. That's we were right, joking yeah. on ourselves. Stop the yelling. You know, how can I learn so much every week and still be so stupid? <laughs> I'll make you stop. <laughs> There's just so many weird episodes that have now kind of stood the test of time in terms yeah. of the fans' favorites. <laughs> I always like the scream episode when I when I tell Jennifer Love Hewitt. I'm the screamer around here. I always love that one. <laughs> yes, girl, I am the screamer around here. The scream episode, they laughed so hard and giggled so often. They had so much fun doing it. The camera is panning over all of our faces and it's trying to like see if it can pick up on guilt about who the murderer could be. And we just, none of us could keep a straight face. And finally I had a choice, either to come down and say, let's be professional here. He wants to come here, he wants to kill us, wants us to wait right here. <laughs> or just laugh with them and understand that it was really a truly good episode. What are you, psycho? I remember bridesmaid dresses. I ain't wearing it. <laughs> Trina and Maitland, you know, we were all, this is ridiculous. <laughs> but when I tore the dress off, they were worried, like, oh, are the bloomers gonna fall down when you do this? Die, dress! Die! Die! It was a funny episode because, first of all, it took us like an hour to get into that Dad, dress. It can't hurt you anymore. <laughs> and then there was the final episode. Oh, I think the last episode was really brilliant. I remember standing on the set watching that, and everyone was teary.
I remember only the emotion that I had. And I remember looking at the kids. And they were very moved, very emotional. You know, it, it did feel like someone was kind of closing a chapter on my childhood, but what can I say? I, we were emotional and sad and happy and excited all at the same time. <laughs> and Michael Jacob, at regular intervals, would sit us down and tell us, this isn't going to last forever. This is incredibly special. So enjoy it while it's here. It was hard to say goodbye. It was hard for that to be over. Are you all right? Of course I'm all right. I've been in this jail a million times. Never after dark. <laughs> We've had a great life in syndication, and they've been airing the show a lot on different networks. And it's wonderful that people get a chance to see the show. That was when we built a real yeah. following, and the true fans. Yeah. It's really interesting. It's continued to grow every year. Like, the further we get away from it, years-wise, the more people recognize us. I've been recognized before without saying anything, and I just think that's shocking and, and surprising, but it's also cool. I tell you, not really too many days go by that people don't come up and talk about Boy Meets World. They felt like they grew up with us. And they want to share the show with their kids for a future generation of fans, and I think that's what's really good about Girl Meets World, because I think that will do that. Oh. No. Put it back. <laughs> we have some very strong, committed Boy Meets World fans, and I hope we're gonna have just as strong and committed Girl Meets World fans. Topanga, right? Have a seat. I have been referred to as Topanga for 20 years. I can't imagine my life without Boy Meets World. I can't imagine what my life would be without Ben, Ryder, Will, Michael, and the rest of the cast. I really can't. It was a great opportunity to spend seven years with a great group of people. We really embraced each other, and we enjoyed each other, and we laughed at, a lot at each other's stuff. And it was wonderful. Every day to have that group of people make you know this, this show together, it was really magical. I think we did a good show. We have to give Michael the credit for keeping the show meaningful. And it was fun for me. It was the most remarkable experience for me. And it's because of these people and this family we got to be.